the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, a few scriptures. My people, popular scripture, are destroyed for the lack of knowledge for the lack of knowledge they are my people and yet they will be destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest unto me psalms 45 and verse 4 it says and in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth ride prosperously because of truth you can you can ride with joy and audacity and confidence even into virgin dimensions because the chariot that carries you is truth and you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth ride prosperously majestically with honor and nobility because that which carries you is truth are we together there are two reasons Luke chapter 19 there are two reasons why Jesus wept in the Bible as recorded in Scripture the first reason why he wept it was in John chapter 11 when you read from verse 35 Jesus wept because he heard that Lazarus had died and when he wept they said oh how he loved him so he wept because he had lost Lazarus the second reason why Jesus wept is found in Luke chapter 19 from verse 41. Luke 19, 41. Can we read it together? It's projected. We'll read 41 and 42. Ready? Please read. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Why did he weep? Verse 42. Saying, if thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto your peace but they are now hid from your eyes jesus wept when he looked over jerusalem he saw the gross level of darkness and ignorance the bankruptcy of spiritual illumination and he brought tears to his eyes he says if you had known the things that make for your peace but now they are hidden from you. And let me tell you this. When you are breaking new grounds or enlarging, usually you are not starting. So there is a kind of knowledge you should have had that brought you that far. Is that true? Now let me tell you this. Exhaustion is proof that you have limited the validity of the knowledge you had before arriving there has finished exhaustion is a letter from your future to you that i am there but this level of knowledge you have will not take you past that realm the moment you find out that you plateau in business in life in ministry especially if you've had some kind of result it means your knowledge is limited every level in life requires a certain kind of knowledge to scale you to that level i've had the honor and the privilege of talking with very successful people in ministry in business politicians and sometimes i i've had the honor of talking with people according to certain cadres and as you talk with them you know the difference it, it, their knowledge justifies why they are higher or lower hallelujah are we together let me show you a scripture that will bless you first corinthians 8 and verse 2 please never forget this scripture for as long as you live let's read together 
first corinthians 8 to ready one to go and if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know please look up in in the academia we have grades is that true f e or p c b and a i think that those are the general grades when somebody gets f i think p starts from 40 in most uh, institutions you can get 38 38 is not the same thing as zero yet zero and 38 is still f are we together do we agree that zero and 38 is still now if they ask you to stand according to how you failed the person who got zero will be behind so you are in front of someone yet if they say all those who got f stand here you will be in the same category so just because there is someone behind you does not mean you have passed and they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise so if the person who scored zero the person who scored 12 the person who scored 21 and the person who scored 38 are there arguing about who is greater and some intelligent people who is greater they all are still they, they, they are still under f high level spiritual illumination be careful when you find consolation in the fact that at least someone is behind me the question is what is your grade i can sing better than this i can preach better than this at least i have hundred thousand and if you are just saying that to thank god for his message that's fine but you are saying that to endorse mediocrity this is why africa still remains the way it is we celebrate nothing we clap over nothing I apologize i'm here to stretch you you called it you invited me here to come and are we together listen can i tell you this champions are so determined to rise they don't even know when they've crossed the finish line because their eyes are never on the finish line they, they would have crossed the finish line and they are not even aware they are too distracted to be stopped to say look you finished I didn't even realize I finished five years ago because I'm still aiming at something higher. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. You're a man of God here, yeah, study like you've not started. You're a businessman here, yeah, do business like you've not started. Don't let one million, ten million, hundred million deceive you. Is that all you need in your life? Don't go back home and say I'm better than the rest. Remember my teaching. Don't forget this teaching on 0 and 39. You can use it to counsel pride out of people. Many years ago, I schooled in a region where we used to do debates, this thing called debates you remember quiz and debate and relative to the schools around us they were not really very smart it was a very simple area and so if they heard that we were coming it was like terrorists were arriving until the day we went to face another school we were champions within i mean whether you rehearse or not because the other school can literally get zero in the whole quiz they can answer they can fail all the questions so even if you answer only three you will still go back with the price we kept believing we were good until now we went to do a state a statewide quiz and debate oh my god we returned back to that school like we're returning from a funeral i remember students you would see somebody who is 14th position and yet his average is 80.5 there are very good schools like that. You see somebody with 95%, yet his position is 11th in class. 95%. And you will see another school, somebody having 41 position, 40, I mean, um, uh, 41, 
maybe 50 and his third position I'm not concerned about your score what is your grade that level I press I'm better than my family members thank God I press I'm better than everybody around me by whatever standard I press the day his majesty claps for you then you know you have done well until then you set your eyes you see refuse to be distracted it's good to pat yourself at the back when god grants you grace but be careful you can over pat yourself and it slows down your pace and you don't even move forward again is god speaking to someone high level spiritual illumination you are a businessman stop running around go and sit down get books and study go and study you are in ministry you're a man of god don't say there are so many invitations doors of ministry is opening who is inviting you you see until you get to the palace don't trust any other place you are in only the palace can give you the reward that actually enthrones you like royalty I have a restaurant apostle until you serve kings don't stop get the knowledge I, I am I am a tailor who are you who are you dressing until you dress kings don't stop are we together stretch yourself stop celebrating mediocrity pat yourself at the back don't be too hard on yourself but I'm telling you don't be afraid of stretching yourself you will not die say knowledge Amen. say light quickly number three are we learning something it's good to come to church the third price it takes for enlargement is the price of wisdom wisdom what is wisdom I gave it a definition here and I want you to listen to the definition wisdom is the ability to generate life applicable solutions from the truth of scripture the ability to generate life applicable solutions from the truth of scripture that is the definition of wisdom the ability to generate life applicable solutions from the wisdom from the truth of scripture ecclesiastes chapter 10 please and verse 15 let's hurry up for sake of time Ecclesiastes 10 15 let's read it so you don't say I'm insulting you you have to read it ready one to read the labor of the foolish weary it how many every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city not because there is no city when my people were driving me here I told them I said do you know the place they said yes do you know why because having that wisdom redeems time the bible says the labor of the fool so the fool here is not lazy but the labor will still weary him because he does not he's not working in wisdom wisdom is a time redemption strategy wisdom can reduce years of wastage in your life are we learning Proverbs 24 and verse 3, very popular scripture. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the seas. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light. Arranging the stars to your pleas. Through wisdom is a house built through wisdom a house there does not just mean a house physically amplified gives it expression a business a family a venture whatever it is it is built anytime you want to build anything to last the architect you should employ is wisdom wisdom has proven to be a superior architect if he builds for you that building will stand let wisdom build your ministry let wisdom build your business. 
let wisdom build your family let wisdom build your finances and you can be sure the architecture of wisdom is superior by every standard wisdom Luke chapter 14 I found this scripture and it really really blessed me Luke chapter 14 <laughs> from verse 30 sometimes you wonder why some things how they made their way to the Bible now Jesus was teaching here and he was teaching about counting a cost the cost dimension right he gave one illustration and I'm interested in the second half of the illustration saying this man began to build now and was not able to finish it a man that did not count the cost 31 or what king going to make war against another king seated not down first and consulted whether he is able to with 10,000 men to meet him that come against him with 20,000 say wisdom and if he finds out 32 that he's not able to come against him what will he do while the other is yet a great way off he sended an ambassage and desired conditions of peace this guy wants to go and fight but the bible says if this guy does not use wisdom <laughs> excuse me they will kill him in a way as though he has never fought he said calculate if you know that the enemy coming is bigger send envoys of peace are we together that's what Esau did do you remember Jacob and Esau Jacob and Esau now was it Jacob or Esau who did it now Jacob sent envoys to try to make peace so that all this trouble would not be there there are many people who have zeal but no wisdom Here he's talking about going to fight he's saying be, beware don't just say god is with me choose your battle with intelligence there are adversaries you cannot fight did you hear what i said please look up let me tell you there are human beings you cannot fight on earth if god wants you to circumvent them he grants you favor with them but as for casting them forget it you will not cast them they are called gatekeepers they are the kind of people that the bible says when a man's ways pleases the lord he make it his and there are other enemies he kills there are others he will make them have peace with you so that you will pass that door not everybody is killable there are people who are gatekeepers this is why many believers don't get promotion because they look at a man who is the ceo of a company you know that this man does not love god but the grandmother was already an intercessor and god covenanted with her that to your fourth generation nobody will bring you down so even though that man is a it's a traditional worshiper that covenant the mother had is still speaking you will come with your zeal from church and insult him and say i know who i am and the covenant fights you to your knees listen to what i'm teaching you and learn there are there are territories you don't step in foolishly yes sir there are people who are trusting god to get properties and land and you go and you just they arrange all the people this one works in fcda this one is friend to the minister this one is friend to the president this one is friend to your destiny helper you insult all of them in one single statement who will beg who for you now you can be born again but you will not own a single property the bible says if you are going to war find out the arsenal you have first because wisdom can direct can i tell you this is the wisdom strategy that many believers do not have and they keep failing at a territorial level the bible says when you find out your enemy is greater than you this is not spiritual warfare this is what this is working in the cosmos make for peace immediately are we learning the price of wisdom when uh, when 
um i think it was it was uh, pastor abu that was here and he was now commending and celebrating the chairman it was the wife and she said let's appreciate him and he said it's his birthday i said what wonderful people you see that for the man who owns this facility to come and participate that's already enough humility and an open-heartedness that he has come to receive to sit down quietly and they were wise enough to honor him the demon that want to bring fight between two of them now has wasted his time you see I, I, I'm saying this so that you will learn. Most preachers will say, I'm a servant of God. This is church. And act in a way that will pony you can add five years of pain because of one day of foolishness. What of people who return and insult their parents? I'm a graduate, I'm this and that, and you insult your parents. Mama, I'm no longer a child. And all of that. And she says, all right, what you have done to me, I didn't go to school. But may your children do it to you you say amen i don't care i'm the righteousness of god until you find out that by 50 your life is still looking like 25 and mama has gone to be with the lord it will take the mercy and the covenant of priesthood to deliver you from that cause there are many believers who keep acting in ignorance when i was going to start ministry i went and met my biological parents i was a man of god i was blessing them but I told them, I said, listen, you people, may, I may have more revelation than you, but you are my parents. God is launching me. I got down my knees. I said, both of you, not just one. It took two of you to bring me. Two of you put your hand on my head and speak blessings upon me. There are many careless things believers do. Results don't just happen. The realm of the spirit is a realm of order. You don't violate ordinances and expect doors to keep opening. I pray you value what is happening. There are some of you here. The wisdom key you need is that for as long as you've been looking at the man of God, this is my pastor. This is, in fact, my younger sister is his friend, my elder brother. You may never rise. The wisdom key there you need is discernment. Who is this man? What relationship does he have? Let me hurry up for time. Wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 8, when you read the entire Proverbs chapter 8, it said, By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. Wisdom now. With me are riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness, that those who love me, they will eat the fruit thereof. He said, Choose me than silver, choose me than fine gold. That when God was building in the beginning, I was there. Wisdom is telling you, I'm a master at building things. When the earth was being made, I was the architect behind it. Please lay your hand on your head in one minute and cause the root of lack of wisdom. Pray in one minute that in the name of Jesus, every decision I have made as a result of lack of wisdom, tying down my productivity, Tying down my advancement in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. In this conference and in this service, I decree liberty. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Let's hurry up. Is someone's life changing? Price number price number four the price of diligence and productivity the fourth price it takes for enlargement is the price of diligence Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 23 in all labor there is profit but the talk of the lips only tended to penury in all labor there is profit the labor of prayer the labor of study in all labor there is profit laziness is what both god and satan agree that is destructive if you're a lazy person both god and satan you will not be useful to any one of them because both of them require diligence are we together yes sir 
our world is full of lazy people who give excuses lazy people who give excuses proverbs chapter 12 we'll read verse 24 quickly and then 27 the hand of the diligent shall bear rule but the slothful shall be under tribute 24 the hand of the diligent shall bear rule but the slothful shall be under tribute same chapter 27 now same chapter the slothful man listen roasted not that which he took in hunting look at this kind of waste that means a lazy man is a waster you went and as far as killing the bush meat and you didn't roast it so it decays the slothful man does not roast that which he took in hunting but the substance of the diligent grows that's what it means by it's precious that means a lazy man always leaves opportunities and anything he has unrefined because you see when you kill the meat in this example people will not just come and buy something dirty like that you did not roast it and prepare it the money comes when you package it is that true you kill the bush meat you dry it and do this then you can now charge for it but for as long as it is in its raw state it will waste it says but the substance of a diligent man is always precious that means he adds value to it proverbs chapter 3 from verse 13 and 14 i just want scriptures to speak to you happy did i get that right happy is the man that findeth wisdom the man that get it understanding there's what i'm looking for let's see 14. no no this is for wisdom proverbs 22 i meant to say verse 29 see it thou a man thank you that's what i'm looking for see it thou a man diligent in his business his business there means everything that he's involved with the bible leaves him with an assurance that he shall stand before kings and he shall not stand before mean men shout it loud and clear say in the name of jesus, name of jesus. I, decree I decree and declare that the spirit of diligence rests upon my life i am productive i am diligent i am productive i am diligent men reward me for my uniqueness turn it into a prayer in one minute i decree and declare that i am diligent diligent competent excellent exceptional hallelujah please sit down god bless you let me show you a scripture that blessed me one more scripture and we'll move to the next point i hope you are not tired first kings 7 13 and 14 first kings 7 now king solomon was building the temple and he was looking for all of the men and the women who would be used to do certain things and the bible says king solomon sent and fetch Hiram this was a young man out of Tyre look at the the background of this great one I wondered why the Bible had to give us that information verse 14 he said he was a widow's say no excuses, no excuses. this boy was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali the Bible says his father was a man of Tyre a worker in brass and he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works of brass say competence say diligence say excellence the Bible says and he came to King Solomon and wrought all his works there are people that only serve kings their level of diligence makes it injustice for them to serve mean men can I tell you, be so outstanding that your only clients are kings. Don't just decide and say, I won't serve mean men. By what qualification? Your competence is what upgrades you. There is a way you can sew someone's clothes 
that the person who you sold the clothes will not reach you again not because he's afraid that standard he knows i've not i've not gotten here he will call the helper that befits your standard to you can i tell you this when you serve kings you will remain in the palace let's hurry up how many have i given you price number five now the last three that i'm about to give you are maybe not more powerful but they are very very strategic i'm giving you seven i've given you four number five are you ready for this the fifth price that you must pay if you want to break new grounds and enlarge is the price of spiritual warfare just two scriptures and we'll jump i'm not talking so much on that so that we can focus on six and seven first corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9 it is true that there are at there are demonic constructs that are sent by satan to stand at the gate of your next level and you must understand how to ward off the arsenals of darkness otherwise you will remain small read with me please one to read for a great door and effectual is opened unto me and there are many you can't truly be elijah till you know how to conquer jezebel you can't truly be gideon until you know how to destroy the idols that authorize the the adversaries to come and destroy you can't truly truly be jesus until you have the discernment to maneuver between the arsenals of satan directly confronting him after his fasting through peter and through judas there is nobody in scripture who became great who did not have a reason to ward off the arsenals of darkness you will not be an exception many believers are ignorant as to what to do to maintain their victory do you think do you actually think that satan will fold his arms and watch souls get saved through your life and watch lives transform mama do you think god will fold your arms and watch all your four daughters give birth to prophets that will change nations do you know when you are worshiping in church it's not only angels that are seeing you demons are hearing that sound of your commitment to heaven that lord i love you with everything when you are sowing they see you sowing any believer who does not understand spiritual warfare has signed up for limitation a few of you may have heard me say this in my teachings that years ago i was praying and i had a vision the ceiling in my room just disappeared and i saw this creature that just looked at me big eyes red and it was like the tail had another life of its own and it looked at me and was fuming with anger and fury and he said so you think you can bring god's people into abundance and the vision disappeared can i tell you there are people satan is not attacking not because they are not what is attack is because they've not done anything significant make no mistakes there are attacks that follow mantles there are attacks that they don't follow men they follow anointings the day god makes a declaration over your life satan is also a witness i have vowed that you will be the one to raise everybody in your family and they hear it why do you think the spirit of the antichrist kept moving through the scribes and pharisees to ask who jesus was what were they looking for they came to john and he said are you that one john said i'm the voice he said what confusion is this that's why in anger they killed him you see that the anger of herodias it was not about dancing and head it was a vendetta for playing games with us they removed his head there was something john knew that kept him strong there was something he lost and he paid for it just because he was a prophet if john were to be killed the active part of his ministry should even be when they killed him nobody could touch him there was something he knew offense came in 
and that offense gave room for many other things and look how miserable a prophet died nope he would stand and look at the same people who killed him you brood of vipers and insult them and nobody could touch him there was immunity that understanding gave him but offense came go and ask jesus are you the messiah or should we expect another and in that that pain and that offense he destroyed and wasted his life number let me give us one more scripture just write for reference in luke chapter 8 from verse 22 to 28 let me just look at two or three scriptures there luke chapter 8 from verse 22 and now i am i'm i'm interested in just one verse 22 but the whole story is from 22 to 28 remember the story about the wind and the storm they were going to gadara i'm just going to talk on 22 it came to pass on a certain day that he went out into the ship with his disciples the he being jesus and he said unto them let us go on to the other side say the other side that other side you want to go to is not empty that other side you desire to go to when jesus said let's go to the other side demons had it the other side means the salvation of 10 cities the other side meant the deliverance of a man who had been under captivity the other side meant giving an opportunity for a city to experience jesus and the bible says and they launched forth suddenly there was a storm of wind that's what the bible calls it a storm is made up of two things the wind and the water the water is the one you can see but that water is powered by the wind you cannot see if you want to calm storms the spiritual principle is rebuke the wind and the water if you focus on the water you are wasting your time the water is a victim of the wind every physical problem you see is powered by a wind the water is just the one you see the trouble in your office the trouble in your marriage but all of that is powered by the wind jesus rebuked the wind and the sea was calm so for as long as you are just quarreling husband and wife you are just beating your children no there is a wind you don't try to calm the water but how do you use your hand to calm water it is the wind and the water will come for someone you just got a key now that you do not judge things just from the physical appearance what is this attack around my ministry destiny helpers are just living and being misrepresented that is water always know that a storm is made of two things wind and water learn from jesus how he calmed the storm is how we calm our storms rebuke the wind all of a sudden a, a prophetic word comes that God is promoting you in office and everybody all your superiors it looks like a coordinated attack they are finding faults in you for some reason money is missing in the bank all kinds of things are happening arguing physically is like using your hand to calm water it's a total waste of time you know what to do now go to the wind he says shalom peace be still by the time he got to the other side he now met what he was calling the wind they were the demons that were in the man in gadara they knew he was coming to them they knew that in saving that man you would save 10 cities and they started troubling the water satan does not fight you for you he fights you for what you will do elizabeth if he fights your barrenness it is not because of your womb it is because of john the baptist who will honor and who will baptize jesus who will save the world satan is very long term in his approach he does not fight you for you he's known that your third child will become a prophet who will deliver many and so he will even stop the barrenness from the first one at best he will give you two children but that third one he will fight it because there is prophecy on him can I tell you, believers must understand the art of scriptural, the scriptural art of warfare. Hmm. A ministry does not just rise and thrive. You ask your pastor and his wife, they will tell you. They will tell you things that they have done. Mysteries they have engaged as touching, securing all of this. You think, I tell you the truth, look, 
if you do not understand warfare just register this in your mind you will not last not in today's world not not as far as impact is concerned number six are you ready for the sixth prize prize number six is the power of relationships you want to move to the other side you must understand the power of relationships i call it the ministry of destiny helpers matthew chapter 4 from verse 18 and 19 matthew 4 18 and 19 matthew 4 <laughs> and jesus walking by the sea of galilee saw two brethren simon called peter and andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers here was his proposition to them 19 and he said unto them instruction number one follow me everybody say follow me. follow me follow me means join yourself to me follow me means believe and walk in my ideologies follow me means open your heart to my influence and i will make you forget about becoming fishers of men the way you become is to follow me leave me to do the making relationships are powerful in this kingdom you've heard me say it who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters vashti the king hates you one day and you stop becoming queen as simple as that hadassah the king loves you one moment and you become queen Joseph, the king loves you one moment and you become prime minister. What sort of injustice is that? Just because someone becomes endearing towards you, your life can change. Yes, sir. Is it not because God so loved the world that he gave? There is a relationship between love and giving. When people love you, they give. Money is not the only thing they give they share their influence they share their honor they share their credibility nobody rises beyond a certain threshold in isolation this is a world where interdependence is the law of growth even biologically speaking you see that now procreation happens because a husband and his wife it is their meeting together that brings children. Don't tell me you want to rise. Show me what you are uniting yourself with. And I can predict your future. Are we together? Very, very powerful. Follow me and I will make you. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. When they saw the mighty works that were done by Peter, they were amazed because they knew this man. A few years ago, they were fishermen. Four years ago, what is suddenly changed now? He rounds up his, his message by saying this. After the man at Get Beautiful had been healed and the council called him to defend, to find out by what power or what name that miracle had come. Neither is there salvation in any other, he said. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Next verse. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them. Help me finish the reading. That they had been... So, I look at you by January... And I know financially you are not doing well. And by April, I'm seeing what you are doing. I'm seeing what you are buying as a seed for the church. I have a right to ask you. That level of speed is not what you are doing. Is who have you joined yourself with? Look at this. If by next week, 
if by next week i may be so for you in jesus name but let's say by next week one of our uh brothers here who, who maybe is just starting god is helping him by next week he just comes to say pastor i want to give this church a property of so 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 acres the first thing you are going to ask him is where did you go to not what did you do that kind of result is not about what you have done again where did you that means who did you meet and he will tell you i used to have an uncle god just lifted this man he became this and that and that and he called me ah is there any man in the house of saul that i may show kindness for jonathan's sake who likes you matters this is our world where we say it doesn't matter who likes me if you are saying that to honor jesus congratulations but if you are saying that to despise men welcome to the world where pain will be a teacher for you for a very long time because in this world of men believe me when i tell you who likes you matters are we together the power of relationships i wish i had time i would have taught you on the four kinds of relationships basic kinds of relationships you need in your life maybe i should summarize it in one minute i may not give you some. the greatest thank you gift you will give to me is to use the things you are learning don't just carry your notes and run back home and say this was a powerful program you would have wasted the time of your pastor give your best to eat and change your life like night and day number one divine connectors the first kinds of destiny helpers you need in your life they are called divine connectors these ones do not have what you are looking for but they know who has what you are looking for you need them an example of this is the slave girl she could not heal naaman but she could link him up with a prophet who could heal him the secret for of receiving from divine connectors is discernment and humility because divine connectors will usually come in a form and a fashion that they don't look accepted it can be a conductor of a boss who will give you the poster of a program here some of you it is amazing how you found out that this program was working divine connectors someone may even be saying it in passing do you know Many years ago, there's this shirt, when they are doing programs, then in Zaria, they, there will be this shirt, not our own program, but there are programs that people will wear shirts, and sometimes these shirts fall into the hands of some of these Hausa boys and the rest, and they can wear the shirt running around playing football, and someone can look through the shirt, ah, what is happening there? That person passed, he was just running wearing a shirt, but strangely was a divine connector. Are we together sometimes someone can sit down you just stay to take a bottle of mineral quickly from a shop and you hear someone a message playing who is this that is playing that message and they tell you oh that's nice and say, ah, that man's church is somewhere in kubwa here and you just say let me go and check out and that becomes the beginning of a defining moment can i tell you for those of you who only respect the people who are rich be careful you will be in trouble it's good to honor all men because divine connectors come in forms that it takes discernment to see number two still talking about relationships and destiny helpers number two the second category of people that you need if you really want to rise are called men of influence men of influence are gatekeepers they are the captains and gatekeepers their credibility matters to your rising one person's signature can sort you in this abuja your prayer request the answer is already in abuja moving in a car every day apostle i'm trusting god for a job you'll be surprised who is sitting down right now i'm begging someone to find 10 people and bring because of relationships you know what i'm talking about in fact let me be honest with you and and i don't don't feel bad when i came into this city I was shocked at the, the way growth happens in this city is 80%, maybe fairly, 70% relationships, more than competence. 
one person can like you and call you and say they are allocating lands your father did something nice before he passed on i hope you'll be a good child and you'll be laughing you think it's one plot of land they gave you until you get there and you are trekking like you are lost all that land is yours are we learning don't trivialize men of influence don't see people moving around and then insult them and say these people are eating our money not everybody is a thief until you hear their own story don't see every young man that is blessed and just say these are yahoo people these are you were not there when they are paying their price not everybody is a thief you must redefine your understanding there are people who can defend the blessing of god upon their lives men of influence a dear man that i respect so much very wealthy and blessed man in this city one day he was giving me a story and he said there was a man who started a birudi change he's one of the top birudi change people in this nation and he said the man came to him a muslim for that matter when he came to him he said he was going to start a business like this and you know these yellow notes that you start you what they call them sticky notes thank you he just wrote a little he said kindly consider and put his signature he said he should take it to a particular bank that is now defunct when he took it there the people tried to drive him and he said i was sent leave me alone and eventually when he got there he met the woman the, the person who was managing the branch yes he said well, how did you who brought you here and when they gave that she looked at it she took a deep breath and laughed and said how did you meet this man and the outside man was just speaking all kinds of things cut the long story short when god lifted that man he came and he met the wife of this man and knelt down and said this is the first profit i'm making from my business muslim he said please let me give it to you the woman said what for i'm just happy you are rising he said no please collect something from it and the woman looked at him she said i like you when the woman who is married to your destiny helper likes you I hope I'm not wasting your time. He you said you're a wise man. Because of course the man will not go. What is he going to do with the money? But he begged her. He said, please take something from it. And she laughed. You know, she, these are people who are billionaires. What am I going to do with your profit? How much have you made? You know? And then she spoke to her husband. This is him telling me. She said, please, let's help this man. That was it. Today he's like number two or three within this nation can i tell you the truth men of influence are powerful this thing called signature is not a cause of, that thing is a blessing he said whose son are you that was what they asked david saul asked where are you from whose son are you let me know if i'm wasting my time or there is a covenant that backs you men of influence i'm saying this because we are going to pray there are some of you that the book of remembrance needs to be open for you that somebody when hard things when when simple things look hard is because you have not met a man of influence when god wants to give you acceleration he will connect you to somebody who is a gatekeeper there are people who may hate you let me tell you this when god wants to bless you he will make your enemies your en the person your enemy respects to like you that way it does not matter when, what you, problem you have with your enemy again if i hate you and the person i respect likes you that was what happened between haman and mordecai haman hated mordecai but haman respected the king when god wanted to shame haman he made the king to like mordecai it was haman that prepared the horse and kept dragging it as haman was on top of that horse bow the knee and Hamas, her man went home with shame and told his wife. And she said, What is that? Where is that man from? He said, He's a Jew. He said, You are finished. A Jew. You have not started dragging that horse yet. You will drag that horse again and again. Can I tell you this? Please listen to me. There are people today who got admission, their jam was not enough. But as they were moving, they stumbled across a registrar, a vice. They thought he was just a gate man. What are you doing here, sir? 
I'm a widow. I'm, I mean, my mother is a widow. I'm the son of a widow. This is the whole thing. And he just looks at him and says, come next, come tomorrow. Tell them to take you to room 212. And the naive person will just come to room 212, not knowing that is the registrar. The key to receiving from men of influence is honor. Honor is the key to access. Don't trivialize results when you see it. Don't commonize it. Don't explain it away. You may do that to your detriment. There are people today who, when God opens a door, the men they have offended will close it. You don't know men can close doors? Go and read your Bible. The Bible says, I am he that was dead and I hold the key of David and I can open a door that no man can shut. That means there are certain doors that men can shut. This man, I remember, pastor has prophesied favor and while you are going because of carelessness in dishonor, someone says, you know what? What is the name of your father? Uh, his name, and you excitedly say it. And he remembers in 1971, your father did something to me. He says, okay, you just write an abbreviation on your form. You think it's a, it's a special recommendation. That, that code he has written there, that form will remain there for 10 years. I pray for someone here in the name of Jesus Christ. If there is anything that represents an embargo, that will allow that will not allow ease to walk in your life let it be cancelled right now forever let it be cancelled right now forever please sit down and let's wrap up they had been with jesus let me show you one last scripture and then we'll touch the last point are you ready for that last scripture genesis chapter 12 we'll read from verse 1 to 4 then we'll go to chapter 13. Please look at this very carefully and learn from it. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, who did the Lord speak to? Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and I will to a land that I will show you. Verse 2. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. Thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee. In thee shall all the family of the earth be blessed. Who was God talking to here? One man. Read verse 4 together if you're a Christian. Ready? One to read. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Next sentence. And Lot went with him. Stop. Who went with him? Who spoke? Who did God speak to? Did God speak to Lot? Lord said, I may not have had God, but I will follow you since God spoke to you. And Lot went with him. Go to Genesis 13 for sake of time. Let's start from verse 5. Here is a powerful lesson for someone to learn on this Lord's day. Are you ready? Please look up while I read. And Lot also, which went with Abraham. Why will the Bible be emphasizing this? that lot who did not hear god that lot who did not have any promise on him but he was wise to understand relationship he had flocks he had herds he had what was his wisdom followership god spoke to a man i will bless you and he said i will follow you and god says okay Whoever follows a man of wisdom qualifies to partake of the fruits of wisdom. Verse 6. Now watch this. Enjoy it but learn a powerful lesson. And the land was not able to bear them. Uh -uh. That means if you looked at Abraham and Lot, you would not even know which one God spoke to again. God spoke to Abraham. Lot went with him. Now they had, they had substance you could not differentiate who was sent and who followed listen the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together why for their substance was great so that they could not now here is a lesson that i pray you will never make in your life 
do not make the mistake that you are about to learn are you ready verse 7 and there was a strife between the headsmen of abraham's cattle and the headmen of lord's cattle can you imagine that and the canaanite and the perizzite dwelt in the land next verse be patient you came to church and abraham said to lord i let there be no strife i pray thee between me and thee and between my herdsmen and thy herdmen for we be brethren verse 9 is not the whole land before you separate what was the basis of his lifting now abraham is saying it looks like you have gotten to a point where you have forgotten why god bless you so for peace to reign separate he says i pray thee from me if thou will take the left i will go to the right if thou will take the right i will go to the left in other words location does not matter for me i know what is on me you just go he would have been wise to say what is on you that makes both the left and the right to prosper you please sit down verse 10 and lord foolishly lifted up his eyes and beheld the plain of jordan that was well watered there before the lord destroyed sodom and gomorrah even as the garden of the lord like the like the land of egypt as thou cometh unto Zohar, verse 11 be patient and lord chose him all the plain of jordan and lord journeyed the east and they separated themselves the one verse 12 abraham dwelt in the land of canaan read the remaining part and lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent where towards the first decision lot will make outside of the influence of abraham was a foolish decision that took him near sodom when abraham came to help him where did he find him in the middle of sodom did he find him with cows did he find him with head this was a man who was hiding for his own life and lot went with him and lot separated from him can i tell you there are destinies you must protect there are relationships you must protect by covenant it has nothing to do with your emotions something about the well-being of your destiny is connected to them when satan wants to fight you he will separate those relationships and down you go till shame leaves you there are general relationships there are seasonal relationships but there are covenant relationships your relationship with jesus has nothing to do with your feeling it's a covenant that you must protect because your life depends on it you don't do him any good giving your life to him are we together your relationship with your parents another time as god grants us grace we'll deal with the remaining two let me go to the last the seventh are you ready the seventh key the seventh price that is responsible for the fearful lifting of people is called the prophetic advantage please pay attention now the prophetic advantage Hosea 12 13 And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Where is Egypt? Egypt is a land of bondage and captivity. How did the people live there? By a prophet. Not by intention. Not by desire. Not by tiredness. It took more than desire for them to leave Egypt. And by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved. Psalm 
second chronicles chapter 20 popular scripture and verse 20 then i established this point and we're done The Spirit of the Lord came upon Zechariah the son of Jehoiada, the priest, who stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken 2020. I think you missed it. 2020. Thank you. I'll just rush to the B part. Believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established believe his prophets there are two realms of believing in order to prosper and to advance the first and in order of eternal priority is that you must believe in the lord if you believe in your prophet before the lord is idolatry in this order believe in the lord you shall be established but if you stop there you will be surprised to be established means to excel at your current level to prosper means to go forward it means to do well when it has to do with your advancement in addition to believing in the lord he said believe his prophets it never said believe the prophet believe his prophets your first assignment is to verify that they are his prophets and if you do find that they are his prophets then believe the bible said by doing so shall you prosper please look up there is no man who will honestly admit to you that he rose to fearful and awesome dimensions of results and will tell you that there was no prophetic contribution to his rising that man will be a liar there is a level that human beings unassisted cannot rise beyond when you rise beyond that threshold we are safe to suspect you of two things either an encounter with a prophet of god or an encounter with a prophet of Baal. in any case we can know for sure that the prophetic has come into your life whether it was diabolically manipulated or scripturally manipulated is another story but please hear me this man standing before you i'm not stupid i know what i'm telling you there are heights you cannot rise you pray and fast for for 10 years there are dimensions you cannot rise unassisted unassisted is the key word when jesus was on his way from heaven to the earth and back to heaven there were three prophets that were introduced in his life that were responsible for the success of jesus number one was a prophet called simeon he spoke over jesus when he was born number two was a prophetess called anna is it in your bible who spoke over his life number three was a prophet who was called john who commissioned and ordained him three prophets for jesus to succeed there is a lot of ignorance in the body of christ oh i will know god for myself i will press into god i don't care once i know jesus the jesus you want to know needed three prophets to excel in his own life three in fact two of them happened when he was not even conscious as far as being a baby is in the flesh and the parents knew those ordinances when he saw john john wanted to leave him but he told john he said suffer it to be so this is an ordinance it will not change someone's life is about to change now Amen. listen to me very carefully I've had the honor of prophetic encounters with fathers and I can tell you definite things that happen in my life afterwards. I can trace seasons of shifts in my life to certain mantles and anointings that God granted me the grace to have. Hallelujah. I 
had the honor and the privilege not too long ago to be in Baba Deboye's prayer room alone. And when I lay down there, my prayer was not give me tea, give me mini tea. You pray, that's a stupid use of time when you are in that kind of atmosphere. Lord, the grace that you have placed upon this man that granted him access to the nations and to preserve the purposes of God. Grant it unto me. Was it not Jabez that prayed and said, Lord, don't let my background destroy me. Oh, that the Bible said the mother named him after her pain. So it was not his fault, but he was a victim of it. She called him Jabez and said, I bore you in sorrow. You brought pain for me. And Jabez said, it's time to change my destiny. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Please hear me. Brothers and sisters, the prophetic, when it is administered within the jurisdiction of scripture, is powerful. It is true that there are abuses of the prophetic here and there, unfortunately and sadly. But make no mistake that just because there are abuses, you just throw the baby at the bathwater, you will remain stunted forever. The prophetic is powerful. One voice that speaks can open up the windows of the world. Let me tell you something with the anointing and with the prophetic as we pray. It is not every prophetic that blesses you. It doesn't have to be fake. There were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. That means on his way to go to meet the woman in Zarephath, he met other widows, but he was not sent to them. He just greeted them. How are you, madam? I hope you are coping well. And he went to a particular person and performed a miracle. The day you find the grace sent to you, that is the day that certain seasons end. Help them, please. Listen carefully. We're about to pray now. The day that you find the grace sent to you, not just the grace you want, the grace sent. I have watched with pride this our generation of arrogant people make costly assumptions to the detriment of their lives. Many years ago, the Lord would give me an instruction to go and sow a seed in the life of God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo. And on that day, I got up. I would not tell you how much, but believe me, it was something that you too, you will know that this is Isaac you gave. It's easy to drive Ishmael. But Isaac... <clears throat> and when I went there, did what the Lord asked me to do, I came out and I was going to enter the vehicle and the Holy Spirit asked me to come out. And he said, I should place both of my hands on the ground. And he said, from today, you have entered the overflow anointing. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Listen. Pastor, many years ago, I don't know if you've heard this story. I was in Jaws. Please give me a little volume. We're about to pray. I was in Jaws. And I, I went to buy sugar cane. And when I got there, it was not, I was, I think it was sugar cane or so. I was going to buy it and I saw some two mothers. Those mama, wonderful women looking. And I looked at them with compassion. And I thought to myself, I said, no, these are my mothers. Let me honor them. And I said, Mama, please don't worry paying for it. Let me pay for you. They were struggling. You know how women tie that thing on their waist. And I said, no, no, no. They, they labor to remove this and only how much is it? Let me pay. And they insisted. I, I forced myself. I said, I will do it. Listen carefully. Because the prophetic requires discernment. It takes more than zeal. Not everybody you see is pure human. No. Let me tell you the truth. When I bought the sugar cane, the women, I gave them, they were happy, they were blessing me. For some reason, I did not pay attention to what they were saying. But one of them looked at me straight to my face. And in Hausa, she said, my son, forever walk upon gold. Can a human being bless you like that? Was it not Melchizedek, that strange king of Salem that Abraham met? 
and he said blessed be Abraham who was the first person to bless him God so why was Melchizedek speaking over him why will Melchizedek speak over him when God had said I will bless you the foolishness of not knowing the ordinances of God just because you had God does not mean you ignore men to rise the Bible still records the blessing of Melchizedek blessed be Abraham son of the most high possessor of the heavens and the earth to move to another dimension a man of God is praying a family man is praying someone pray it's time to move to another level it's time to move to another dimension. Oh, your lifting has come. Oh, your lifting has come. Oh. from the depth of your life your destiny the depth of your heart your destiny is about to be shifted to a new level In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. There will always come a point in a man's destiny where God will give you an opportunity to encounter grace. That can what you do with that opportunity is up to you but according to the law of time and season now listen very carefully I know that our time is gone and I will speak over your life but right now as I'm speaking I want you to bring for me if you can in front here everyone who the power of God comes on right now as I'm speaking because I will tell you why I'm not just asking people to come for nothing I want to pray I'm seeing in the spirit there are people a season is ending and another one is beginning for you and right now I stretch my hands I know that everybody is entering a new season 
but there are people right now as i speak it's you, you can't remain the same i stretch my hands i don't know where they are let that fire right now by the power of the holy ghost bring them out new season by the anointing of the holy ghost please whether you are an usher or not help them Ali Ali yo Ali yo Ali yo Ali Ali yo Oh 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 Ali Ali yo Ali yo Ali yo Ali Ali yo Ali Ali yo Ali yo Ali Ali yo hallelujah now the lord is taking away the spirit of delay i'm seeing the number five i stretch my hands right now fire is coming on fire help them fire is coming upon five people i command that devil of delay leave your destiny now by the power that raised christ from the dead bring them out that spirit of delay i cost you by the god of heaven here at the olive brook church be caused by the spirit Ali Ali yo Ali yo Ali Ali yo Oh Ali Ali yo Ali yo Ali Ali yo Oh Hallelujah Who is Stella I'm hearing a name Stella Who is Stella Stella is there someone with the name Stella Alanda Shalakoska de la Cabran de Gedea what do you do my dear I'm a teacher I'm a teacher you are a teacher I want to pray for you you believe in the power of the prophetic I want to pray for you God will change your life look at me my dear in a way that will stop you remember this church in the name of jesus i stretch my hands right now i command that the grace that can lift the grace that can shift a man to strange dimensions may that grace come upon you right now right now i decree and declare in the name of jesus you will never be the same by the power of the holy spirit by the power of the holy spirit now hear me whether you are inside or outside the first overflow that I saw when I came in, when I dropped from the car, the first overflow, there are two people there right now as I'm speaking. The power of God is coming on those two people in that overflow. And the Lord is saying he's bringing cycles. This is at least 10 years of captivity over your family in the name of Jesus. You see what God says to one, he says to all. I decree and declare that yoke is broken right now. hallelujah i'm seeing the power of god go through this row there is a gentleman particularly the power of god is coming on you now the lord is saying he has been working on you but he's opening you to a new dimension of insight bring that person here this man put in your hand are you a man of god you are in ministry where huh? you are in abuja here what's your name huh? are you a yoruba man huh? come are you i hope you are not embarrassed that i'm talking to you sir you run a church i'm not no, i'm no sister i'm no sister you're a member of a church you're a pastor i want to pray for you do you know there is an evangelistic anointing upon you in a very strange way a season will come god is going to begin to use you 
Huh? You believe that? You are Yoruba man. From where? Huh? Ekiti State. Ekiti State. I want to pray for you. Who is Tunde? What's your full name? Ayola. Ayola. Tunde. Ayola. I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Look at me, sir. You will begin to have strange prophetic encounters. The Lord himself will shift you to realms and dimensions in the spirit. And I pray for you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. That grace right now is coming on you with power and with grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands. Take that grace. You will move into dimensions of power. Dimensions of grace even by the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now this row where this row here I just saw two people I saw light coming on them two people two people in the name of Jesus Christ I declare as I have seen may that light the Lord by that light is shifting you and breaking yokes that have kept your family down I stretch my hands may that be for you in the name of Jesus Christ wrapping up hear me believers this is not just some jamboree and some gibberish where people who fear God the Lord ordained this meeting today to take you to levels and to stay the hand of darkness and to open new frontiers even over your life believe in the Lord your God so shall you be established he said believe in his prophets so shall you prosper now hear me my friend this man in front of me look at me shout Jesus as loud as you can Jesus! in the name of Jesus Christ that power that comes upon you is taking you to a new level. You will begin to walk in tremendous levels of signs and wonders. I don't know who this man is, but in the name of Jesus, there is such a grace that is coming upon you. Now hear me, we're wrapping up. There are people here who are called into different dimensions and levels of ministry. There is a grace that is coming upon you. You see, you have to do ministry. By ministry there does not mean church even workers serving in the house of God right now at the count of three that grace like a tornado is coming upon you to change your life one two get ready three take that anointing right now in the name of Jesus Christ take that anointing right now take that anointing right now you are the saviors of your family for some of you saviors of your region I decree and declare let that grace rest upon you now outside inside let that grace rest upon you now i place that function on your life in the name of jesus christ the spirit of fear the lord is asking me to cast the spirit of fear anyone here who has been a victim of fear that he will not allow you to move I command that spirit, go now, go now, out of your life. I curse the spirit of fear. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For all of you who are in front here, I decree and declare. The Lord brought you out by his spirit. I shift you to those levels in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Is there someone here who works with INEC? Is there someone here who works with INEC? Well, I'll just pray for you. Perhaps the person, this is a gentleman. 
you walk with INEC, your card is here with you. Do I know you? No, sir. I want to pray for you. Because God is about the month of April. Stand up. The Lord will change your life in a way that will surprise you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this gentleman never forget this conference. I stretch my hands. Grace to find favor even with your superiors. May that grace come upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural grace. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Now, please hear me. Um, the Lord is showing me a family. I don't know if the woman is here. It's been five years. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. One, two, three, four. I'm not saying if you just want a child. Five years. This, this is what God is giving me. Let me just speak over that case and then we'll wrap up. For all of you who are out here, in the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you. It's a new season for you. Please return back to your seats rejoicing. Five years. Is there someone like that? Your wife? Look at me, my friend. You believe in Jesus? My dear, you believe that God? No, no, no. Don't do this, please, my friend. Okay, help him. Just, just help him gradually. Just keep him there. Praise God. I want to pray for you. How many of you believe that Jesus is able to open doors even for the barren? Yes, I believe. This man, you too? Is your wife here? Okay. Don't worry, I'll pray for you. You are a member in this church? And your wife is there a place in this church where you keep children where does your wife work she's a teacher the children depart, the children depart. that's what I'm saying I'm saying your wife works in children department I want to pray for you because God is going to open her womb she has sown the seed Okay, I thought someone is coming. In the name of Jesus, I'm using you as a point of contact. Please place your hand on your stomach as a point of contact. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, here at the Olive Brook Church, in Jesus' name, the one who is the son of the living God, I use this ones as a point of contact to everyone and every family here. It doesn't matter whether you are the one or there's your loved one or someone. I'm praying, please believe that in the name of Jesus Christ, no matter what the medical condition is, by the power of the word, we veto that right now. And I pray for you, according to the time of life, in the name of Jesus, the one who is resurrected, Lord and Christ, I decree and declare, return with your miracle children. Return with your miracle children. Amen. Sir, in the name of Jesus, I correct everything that needs to be corrected in your body. In the name of Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? I correct by the Spirit of God. Everything that needs to be corrected. Doctors can do their best. We appreciate them. But right now, in the name of Jesus, we correct everything that needs to be corrected and we declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead supernaturally there will be a harvest of miracles in this church in the name of Jesus so shall it be in Jesus name now please lift up your hands for these declarations and believe it from the depth of your heart we are changed by the prophetic words we receive in the name of Jesus I declare over you the door that needs to be opened for the next season of your life by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may that door be opened now. May a back may that door be opened now. May that door be opened now. May that door be opened now. I decree and declare every realm 
you have dwelt in you have prayed to move out of that realm it can even be a house you are staying maybe a one bedroom apartment and you are trusting god to move do you know there is a grace for real estate even upon your man of god i stand in agreement with that grace and i declare for everyone who is here believing may that grace rest upon you now rest upon you now rest upon you now hallelujah hear me jacob dug a well and the philistines covered it he dug another one they covered it he dug the third one and they left him and he called it Rehoboth. he said for god has given me my own space that means for everyone here there is a space for you territorially speaking in terms of your job i stand by this mantle of god and i decree and declare the space allocated for you in ministry in business find your place now find your place now please help them find your place now find a part bakata find your place now When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, He said, We were like them that dream. Let me prophesy over someone long standing issues, issues that have lasted 10 years. You have prayed, you have fasted, it has refused to go. I stand by the apostolic and the prophetic. I declare this day that issue comes to an end. It comes to an end. hallelujah exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 someone is about to contact a grace for favor i want you to read it with me as loud as you can one to read and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty I want I want to cause emptiness from your life in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me I want you to receive this I know what I'm praying upon you the mantle of favor that can come upon a man hear me listen 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 the proof of favor is not money the proof of favor is access to the hearts of Kings access to the hearts of Kings I pray for you May that grace rest upon you now. 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 Hallelujah. I want to declare restoration. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. There are some of you who are in financial situations right now. Maybe the bank is after you. Maybe you borrowed money, you invested in a bad investment, it went down. Can I tell you, under a certain condition, everything can return. The Bible has shown it. It said, where fell it? And it threw a stick and the axe head floated. Every kind of trouble you are in right now, that requires restoration you know what it means to restore to restore means to make your life look like that constraint was never there he restored my soul they are taken for a prey and none say it restore let me speak over someone I don't know what you have lost I don't know what left you that should not have gone maybe relationships maybe finances maybe a job let there be restoration for you now restoration now restoration now restoration now hear me everybody assigned by God to hold your hand in this season and lift you to the next level 
I don't know where they are in Abuja here, but I stand by the prophetic. I prophesy to the north, to the south, and the east and the west. Every helper of your destiny show up for you now. Whether in government, in the judiciary, show up for you now. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus grew, he increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. I declare the kind of wisdom that is backed up by mighty undeniable works in the name of Jesus may that grace rest upon you 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 hallelujah we're wrapping up listen honor is a grace you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself mm -mm. honor is conferred upon you by another are we together you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself you know what it means to be honored to be honored means to be acknowledged for the value you truly represent you can be great and yet despised in the eyes of men you are valuable but you don't have honor many people do not have honor that's why they are under rewarded they are not rewarded to really match the truthfulness of the investment of the spirit pastors prophets apostles businessmen can i tell you when honor comes upon you honor will gravitate you to men who can acknowledge your true value and reward you to match it i know what i'm talking about it is dangerous to be in the midst of people who do not discern your true value they will abuse such precious gift it is honor that will make a good man to marry a woman and bless her to match the level of her sacrifice in building virtue it is honor that will make a good woman know that this man God has given me is a gift from God and to honor him. Most people don't have honor. Believe me, honor is transferable. Priest of honor. Given the liberty, access to Egypt because of honor. Most people don't know what honor can do. If you are in a land that is not your father land, what makes you believe? What advantage do you have territorially except that when honor comes, you can reign like Daniel through the dispensation of four kings and you will still remain on top. It was the three Hebrew boys that were tried in fire. Daniel was not part of them. He was kept in the lion's den for only one day and for that one day, all the people paid the price. That's what happens when you touch a man who the mantle of honor has come upon. Can I tell you? honor is a weapon you may have heard me say it honor is a dangerous weapon it fights more than a sword read the book of esther there was no sword yet honor killed it was honor to the king that killed her man she invited her man to join the king in his feast and the bible says when it was the feast of wines Esther came and honored the king and told the king there is a traitor in your camp who is that and he said Haman and the king entered the garden to contemplate and Haman went to bend down and beg the queen and when he came out he thought he was taking advantage of his wife he said this is it let this man go and be hung in the gallows that he built when you fight a man who the mantle of honor is upon, you will be so destroyed in a way that you will not recover. Honor is a weapon. It can garrison you. Destroy it not, for there is a blessing on it. I still want to pray that prayer one more time as we wrap up. 
for shame for reproach everything you have suffered as a result of people misunderstanding your true worth and your true value i pray for you may this mantle of honor change that narrative from today in the name of jesus let me pray for your spiritual life we are not just people who are receiving things no the greatest spiritual investment you can have is not money and favor as wonderful as these things are can i tell you when your fire altar your prayer altar is on fire your word life is strong you are trusting god to grow conforming to the image of the christ he said my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you the kind of prosperity that makes you leave God and forget about the things of God is demonic prosperity. There is something called the prosperity of fools. And the Bible says it does not bless them. It only destroys them. I pray for your spiritual life. I don't know what has happened to your prayer life. For some of you, you were once on fire, zealous for the things of God. Some of you were zealous in the house of God here. You may be workers here and you used to be passionate but either complacency as a result of results or frustration as a result of lack of results it can lead to the same thing to dwindle your fire but right now in jesus name let there be fresh grace upon your altar in the name of jesus christ now i stand upon this altar prophetically the only brook i'm praying for this ministry now in the name of jesus i i know your pastor and his wife they are good people who love jesus and i see it in their heart that they desire that god will continually expand his work to them you see when you pray for expansion it's not about crowd and about it's to give you a greater opportunity to serve the purposes of the kingdom are you in agreement yes, father i pray over the holy book church I stand here as one you have sent by the election of grace and in the name of Jesus by the power that raised Christ from the dead I measure a thousand cubits prophetically and I shift this church to another season I command the two lift gates over this territory to be open in favor of this church I declare the errands and the horse that must come and hold the hands of the man of God to see that he is effective. May that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that fights you goes down instantly. I also extend that prayer to the facility owners and management here it was those who hosted the ark of god open edom the ark blessed him in three months i use this opportunity to pray for the chairman thank god his birthday is here and the wife and all who are part of the facility for the sake of this church being here rise to a new level 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 I pray for all the workers here in 90 days from now I, I stand by the grace of God and by the power of the prophetic like the Aparakash Kobegeta like the ark of God in the house of Open Edom all the workers of Olive Brook Church hear me I speak to you by the spirit of grace rise to a new level rise to a new dimension rise to a new dimension enter your seasons of reward enter your seasons of reward enter your seasons of reward in the name of jesus and hear me everyone who has been ordained to be part of this church family and has not yet located it probably you are here staying in the overflow are we together and God has mandated that you be planted 
within this house of God and to grow and flourish but it takes God to open your eyes to see that this is your assigned place I pray for those people wherever you are in the name of Jesus may the grace that took the animals from the bush and brought them into the ark of Noah on their own accord may that same grace gravitate everyone who should be part of this family in the name of Jesus Christ let there be increase numerically let there be increase financially let there be increase spiritually the word of God will continue to prevail on this altar in the name of Jesus finally I want to make an altar call I have to make an altar call before I leave this place I believe in Jesus he died for me I believed him I received his life and look what has happened to my life today your pastor and his precious wife they are testaments of what Jesus can make out of the life of a man someone came to church this morning in all the overflows following online from whatever nation and right in this auditorium and you've seen all the things that the Lord has said remember the first key I taught you correct perception there might be something you have not seen properly about Jesus and about yourself now he's giving you a chance I want to call two people as one for all the overflows as I call I will just want you to move to the front of the overflow where your screen is and then for those inside here when I make the call I want you to come and stand here listen very carefully you need Jesus do not allow this Lord's day to just go like that two groups of people number one there are those who are saying apostle as I watched you teach and minister by the Spirit the Holy Ghost began to convict me that I need to start a genuine journey with Jesus Christ number two there are those who are saying I remember giving my life to Jesus but as it is my life has gone haywire and I don't want to lie to myself I want to start afresh I'm going to count one to five right in this auditorium and all of the overflows and you who is following in your house watching a rebroadcast or whatever it is now is your chance to come to Jesus as I count one to five don't wait for anyone to come first don't forget about who is looking at you by your left this is a family and this is a serious affair I'm going to count one to five run like there's fire on the mountain come and stand in front I begin my counting now one celebrate them as they come Just stand for space. Please stand for space. Two, are you still coming? Olive Brook, is this the best you can do? Celebrate them as they come. Celebrate them as they come. Three, all the overflows, rush out to the front of your screen. Apostle, I want to come to Jesus, but I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Join them. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. Oh dear, look at our mother. Can you imagine? Just, just leave her. Just leave her there. The last count now. Now all of you who are in front and all who are at the overflows, the various overflows, I want to appreciate you for the courage to come before Jesus here's what the Bible says that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away the house of God is where the authorized platform where there is a transition from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son I salute you some of you are making this decision for the first time and some of you are rededicating your lives albeit you are most welcome may I request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender and then you say these words after me let it be loud let it be clear and let it be truthful are you ready say Lord Jesus I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive your life into my spirit I declare that you are my Savior you are my Lord and you are my King 
I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God from today until forever. I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Keep the hands lifted. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the power of the gospel that is able to save by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare in the name of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.